Greetings and salutations, this is Emperor of Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello, how's the flag? And it's finally finished! Our Type 7 U-boat is done. A 28mm scale German U-boat. So, what do you think of it? It's got a flag. Yeah, it's got a flag on. Um, What's that? What? The life jacket thing. Yeah. And then you've, I like what you've done with the areas that take the water out. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a bit of paint being rubbed off from the from the clip, risen up so much. Yeah, so there she is. That's quite nice. Um, we've just got weathering down the side. Oh, well, all along actually, wherever the water comes out. You've got all sorts of oil and stuff in the water, so when the submarine surfaces, you tend to get a load of detrit detritus and oil, which stains the um, side of the ship. Uh, so because it's humanity that. There she is. Well, it's because the submarine is sailing in waters where it's torpedoing other ships. So, you know. There she is. The whole submarine. Nice pattern. Yes, it's painted in a uh, North Atlantic pattern. Uh, this is the camouflage scheme used in the North Atlantic. So, from side on, it looks like that. Splendid. So, it actually looks quite good side on, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, there she is. I'll just put the crew on now, shall I? So, stick some crew on board. Now you know why we wanted to get some uh, German Kriegsmarine. There we go. So, overall, what's your ideas? Looks well, like a proper submarine. A bit too big though, to be completely honest. It's 28mm scale. So yeah, it's just like the, with, with the map we've got, the size map we've got, it's going to take up all the... Yeah, because it's there. actually part of the scenery. Honestly. Like a set of trees or a building. Yeah, but we can use that. You just can't use trees. Try standing stand in many trees, you have to take them all apart. Yeah, but the whole point is it's, it's an accessible um, building that you can use. It's quite cool, I like it. Um, so yeah, uh, all I did was, yeah, I showed you in the last video, I've just undercoated it in grey and dry brushed it. Now I've just put the detailing on, which did take a huge amount of work and effort. Um, Added the flag, finished the guns, yeah, that's it, it's done. So the Type 7 was the standard U-boat used by the German Navy during the Second World War. It was used right from the beginning of the war right to the last days, although it was superseded by other versions of boats. Uh, the Type 9 was uh, quite a good boat, a lot bigger, um, but this was the sort of standard U-boat that the Germans used. So it sort of comes in for any any period um, of the war. So that's it, that's the completed U-boat. Any questions? I have a fun fact. Go it's on. not to do this, but it's Go a on. fun fact. Go on. Right, you know if a soldier ever got food poisoning, mm -hmm. you know what they did to get rid of it immediately? What? They ate charcoal. Uh, if you eat charcoal, it uh, destroys the uh, uh, the bacteria that's inside your body and flush it out. Yeah. You can also brush your teeth with charcoal. And today you use uh, indigestion tablets, which are the you same can, thing. You can also use, um, uh, you can swallow toothpaste as well. You can swallow toothpaste? Yeah. That's uh, I, I know, I used to eat toothpaste when we ran out of food. Yeah, like, wait, 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 I just put, wait, wait, you know, well, right. When you brush your teeth in the morning and night and in the evening, yeah. I do it three times, nothing you do. Um, do you, Swallow it or spit it out. I spit it out. Right. Everyone else says you should swallow it because it's healthy, but I don't want to swallow it because it's you're just dead bacteria. Yeah, we've got all that rotting chicken and, and yeah, all that stuff you had in your stuff. mouth. Yeah, from the other day. Yeah. So you know, because you only brush your teeth once every week, don't you? So <laughs> you got quite a lot of of stuff in there. <laughs> uh, but no, no, I don't swallow toothpaste if I can help it. Um, but yeah. I mean, toothpaste you've already used in your mouth when you're brushing your teeth. Yeah, it's... You're weird. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to swallow it, but I never do. I just spit it out. It doesn't say that on the tin. It says you should swallow it. No, it doesn't. It does! That's been taught in science. 
Yeah, they teach a lot of stuff in science, don't they? No, it's cost this last year's last year of science for this year and just couldn't bother to teach the science. Yeah, okay. We, we learned some 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 stuff about Dimitri Medlevy, the man who invented the proper periodic table. Med yes. Never lived to see it created. No. Probably. But the the periodic table that they created was like half the size of the one we've got now. You know, I've seen it. It's rubbish, actually. Yeah, it's like it's got <laughs> gaps, and it's, it's like that big. Yeah. But the one before that, the Newlands periodic table, was like the music course. There was like yeah, just it, a twelve elements. Yeah, the way the the, the periodic table works is um, it, it's to make it easier to use it. The the way it's set out, yeah. because you have your gases on one side, you have your element, you and have have elements, and at the top are people at the one one shelf. Yeah. And each roll that goes down is plus a shell. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very easy, quick reference chart. And uh, the activity goes up on group one. Your activity is goes down. The the more element um, more. Um, uh, never mind. It's just that's it. Yeah. The, um, and also, um, the, you can find the reactions quickly. What reacts with what? Yeah. Um, but I only ever use a periodic table in school, and I think that's the only time anybody ever does use one. And the other fun yeah. fact is that in another periodic table, there's two rows at the bottom, which are separated from the periodic table. Yeah. They're elements that have like a millisecond of life before they fall apart. Yeah. And they're invented by individuals, which is why they're called really weird names. Um, the... Um, when they first started, they used they used to use different different countries use different terminology for different elements. So you didn't like IR uh, is it IR for iron? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, different countries use different. Like CU things. CU for copper. Yeah, but they use different things, which is why some of them don't actually match the name, because they're actually using the. Well, to be honest, I hate that. One. I hate I hate the way it's set out like that. CU for copper and all that. It just doesn't make any sense. So I find it hard to grasp when you ask me what does I think it was F U or something, I can't remember. But what does that stand for? And I was like, I don't know. Anyway, back to summary. And, and K is yeah. potassium. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, that's why you have foreign names. So so you, you, the, the, the letter isn't the letter that was originally used by the dudes who made the table, it's the, the letter used by someone else. So oh. that's why the table doesn't make d d d linguistically doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, because it's using different terminologies for different things. Now, is it uh, beryllium uses some... It's it B. That's actually, that's just, actually that correct. Just B, right, that, that's the one that was... was yeah. yeah, that one actually makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of... It's because you're bringing several groups of scientists together to do one yeah. thing, but they're they all these different things. So, back to the submarine. Um, in bolt action, you're not going to be using it as an actual plane model. Um, I suppose you could use the guns. You've got a nice. You've got two. We've got three anti-aircraft guns on it. Um, you've got the 37 millimeter in the turret at the top, in the up here. Yeah, um, I won't be teaching though, will it? You've got the 20 mil cannon at the back, and you've got this here. Um, this is the standard arrangement. Uh, that's upgunned from 20 mil to 37 mil, uh, which was called the experimental 37 millimeter gun. Um, even when it became standard, it was still called the experimental gun. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. Um, the um, a lot of U-boats would have a quad twenty millimeter cannon here, four twenty millimeter cannons mounted up there, side by side, which was actually useful. Um, but the experimental thirty-seven millimeter became um, the standard for the ships that didn't use the quad. Submarines were equipped by the captain. This chap here. He decided what the submarine had. So your submarine arrives without anything on it. And the captain decided what he wanted to mount on the ship as to his flat his sailing style. Mm -hmm. So it was entirely up to the captain. Yeah. So they chose their own guns. Um, some ships were flat boats, so you had extra bits here to mount extra cannon. And you would completely cover the submarine in anti aircraft guns. And you usually had one flat boat to about four normal, three or four normal submarines. So when they were operating together, it could defend them from aircraft. 
Very cool. Yeah. Um, the I mentioned the the um, experimental gum. Do you know the uh, Panzer IV with the 37 millimeter gun? Uh, sorry, with the, the Panzer IV had a 50 millimeter gun at the time. And gamers call it the 4F. <coughs> uh, the 4F1. And then you get the 4F2, which is the special, and that was armed with a 75 millimeter gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That actually isn't a military military designation. The Panzer IV F2 was actually just called the Panzer IV Special. So any Panzer equipped with a 75mm gun is a Special. There is no designation for Fort F2. Alright. You're not interested, are you? I don't understand. Why would you give it 4F1? Then it didn't, that's Wargamers did that. For free. Wargamers called the Panzer IV the F1 and the F2. Why? Because they had the same designation in the German army. There was no special numbering for the Panzer, Panzer IV equipped with a 75mm gun or Panzer IV equipped with a 50mm gun. They were the same designation tank. Yeah, that's overcomplicated. But the crews just called it a special because it had a special gun, it had a 75mm gun mounted in it. You see, that makes sense. Special. There yeah, you go. But now it I never know had, that whenever I see that shape, it's called special. But it never had a special designation. It never had a, a, num a number assigned to it. So when you see, in all manuals, even on Wikipedia, you will see the Panzer IV F and the Panzer IV F2. Right? Mm. And the IV F is the 50mm round gun, and the IV F2 is the 75mm gun. But in reality, they never existed. They, they were never used by the German army, those days and designations. They were invented after the war by WRG. Alright. So, that's, that's an interesting thing. Um, you know, I'll actually explain more of that when we do the Panzer IV, I think, shall we? Well, yeah, because it is the Panzer IV. Yeah. But I was just saying about the special, 37mm anti-aircraft gun is the special experimental gun. It's not special, sorry. It's an experimental gun. But it was a standard armament gun that was so you seen all over the German army. But it was called a special. Uh, sorry, it was called a experimental gun. But it wasn't an experimental gun. It was a standard gun. Uh, this also is the 88. This is an 88 millimeter anti-aircraft gun or anti-ship gun. Is this? It is not the same designation as the 88 mounted on a, a Tiger tank or an anti-aircraft. Gun. It was a naval version of the 88, it wasn't the same gun. But it was still the 88 L56. But it wasn't the same gun, it was a completely different gun. So, there you go. Anyway, um, we could just waffle on about this for hours, but I think we'll go. So, thank you very much for sticking with us to watch how we built this thing from scratch. It's now finally done, and I, I was wondering whether I'd actually get to the end of it. Oh, oh no, he, he jumped off. He jumped off. Now they expect it. Yeah. Um, but there How did he jump with all his equipment? I don't know. Uh, maybe he, he was scared. He so can't use his gun anymore. Maybe a strange dinosaur thing raised a head next to it, and he got eaten. A dinosaur? Yeah. you never seen Doug McClough's film? The Land That Time Forgot? No. We're going to have fun. Oh god. Okay. You seriously, you've never seen Land of Time Forgot? No. Well, I've just finished An Inspector Calls. And I think the Inspector, the Inspector Ghoul is the murderer. Yeah, the Inspector did it. Yeah, I think he did. He's always something sketchy about it. That's why it's called Ghoul. A ghost. Yeah. Ghoul. He, yeah, uh, the Inspector did it. Uh, but, um, uh, Doug, uh, the Doug McClough film, um, the German submarine gets lost in the Arctic. Right? And is it Arctic? Or is it the... I don't know. Anyway, it finds a cave in the ice, so it sails through the cave, and it finds a, a Jurassic Park world. Under the Arctic ice sheet, there's a Jurassic Park world, uh, and there's all these dinosaurs and stuff there. Yeah? you never seen that film? No. It's an awesome film. No. It was my, like, my favourite film when I was a kid. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, thank you very much for watching the video. Do you want to do the outro? So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the German submarine. That's everything from me. And everything from him. Goodbye. See ya.